I have nothing left of my top two dresser drawers. Nothing. My closet is literally empty. If we lived in Manhattan, I could rent it as a two bedroom. Oh, well, this is just the first wave. I have so much more to go through and weed out before I'm truly minimized. Are we going on a trip? Oh my God, is it Disney World? Please tell me it's Disney World. We're not taking you to Disney World. Okay, maybe for Christmas. Mm -hmm. We're minimizing. You know, like from the book, Minimizing, Find the Bliss with Less. It's also a hit TV show on that streaming network we log into illegally. Oh, come on, you two? Literally every job I've had for the past two weeks has been minimizing for someone. Now, I just go in there and toss out random stuff. I mean, how the hell am I supposed to know what brings somebody else bliss? Liza, you're looking at this all wrong. Minimizing is great. Holding onto objects from your past only stops you from moving forward. Unless... I suppose you're one of those people who likes to hold on to their emotional baggage. Who am I to judge? I cling to nothing. I'm like a divorced dad on Tinder. Now, if you want to upgrade to the party hardy package, that's a princess and a magician, and the magician also does balloon animals. Yeah, no, no, no. I think it's totally appropriate for a 15-year-old. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. I will email you over a contract then. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Couldn't help but over here. Are you a party planner? Because tell me, how come no one does the limbo anymore? I mean, it's a crowd pleaser, it's great exercise, and I... <laughs> I also happen to excel at it since I can walk right under the bar until basically the last round. And that's not cheating. I don't care what Todd Bierman says. Well, I actually manage children's entertainers, you know, party starters and clowns and JoJo Siwa impersonators and generic... Disney characters. Whoa, maybe I'll have a party. Hey, we can celebrate minimizing your garage. I've been making some progress here. And there will definitely be limbo. <laughs> no way! Did you know you have a Magic Meadows script here? Where did you get this? Oh, Magic Meadows was my favorite TV show when I was little. Both of my parents worked, so I watched it every day after preschool and kindergarten, and maybe a year or two later than was age appropriate, but I loved it. Oh, we even have a t-shirt. Look, it's Rabbit and Bear. Oh, remember that episode where Rabbit was afraid of the dark, so Bear gave him a little tiny bear to hug when he went to sleep? Oh, come on. Oh. Well, that's just a whole bunch of old junk. I don't know where I got that. <gasps> you have a rabbit? I was Rabbit. What? Yeah, I created that show, and I played Rabbit, and you can just throw all that junk away, okay? Oh, I will do no such thing. Oh, my God, I have so many questions. What was Bear like? Was that real water in Lovelot Lake? More important, who survived the fire? In the last episode, there was a fire in the meadow and it ended on a cliffhanger and there was never a part two. It just disappeared. There were no more episodes. What happened? What was the ending? There was no ending, okay? And there will never be an ending because Jeremy, who played Bear, walked off the set that day and never came back. What, did you try calling him? What, you can call him? I have my phone. You can call him no, right now. No, 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 we have not spoken since that day and we will never speak again. So will you please light up all that stuff like a doob at a fish concert? Because I don't want to look at it again. I do, however, want to smoke a doob right now. Thank you for the suggestion. Ooh. I can hold my drink while I watch TV. Do I really need to sit while I eat? Isn't food better standing? I don't really need this. <laughs> I mean, I know what I look like. Same. That's why I minimize the bathroom mirror. You know, not worrying about my appearance saves me so much time in the morning. Looks like it really helped with shaving. I don't know what you're talking about. You guys, you are never going to believe what I got. Scott, the guy whose garage I've been minimizing, he is the creator and star of Magic Meadows. <laughs> the famous local children's TV show that aired from 1995 to 2002? You guys have never seen Magic Meadows? Get the frap out. I wasn't allowed screens until I was 12. I'm not saying that's why I became an Instagram-addicted celebrity dog mom, but I'm not saying it wasn't either. I was only allowed to watch religious programming. That cartoon with the vegetables? The only show I was allowed. But then I fell in love with Gary the Cucumber, so nice try, Mom and Dad. You know, I'm actually jealous that you guys have never seen it and we'll get to watch Magic Meadows for the very first time. Ooh, I bet there are full episodes on YouTube. I'm gonna go get my laptop. There was a table there, right? It no longer brought me bliss. Hmm. Oh, hi, Mom. What's up? Liza, honey. Listen, I'm at Target, and those candles you love are on sale. Shall I send you a few? Oh, and also your father and I are separating. I'm sorry. I thought you just said candles are on sale and you and Dad are separating, but you obviously did not say that. No, I did say that. <laughs> uh, hey, do they have the Manny S'more candles? Because that's my favorite smell. God, those names are so clever. I am so glad you're not too upset about this, sweetheart. Dad is looking for apartments with Melanie, so we just thought it was the best for everyone. Melanie? Mel Melanie? Like with an M? 
What is that? Who, who is that? Well, your father was supposed to call you. Melamy is his girlfriend. Uh, but listen, it's all fine. Everything's fine. We don't want to upset you. Too late. I'm upset. When did this happen? Well, I don't know. It's been a slow evolution. Like how no one names their child John anymore or has a landline. Who can tell? It's not like it directly affects you. Your bedroom has been a sewing room for four years. Although, hmm, it'll probably be Todd's office now. Todd? Who the f*** is Todd? Liza, language. Todd is my significant other, and he's moving in when the divorce is final. Divorce? You just said separate. Yeah, well, that train's pretty much left the station. So the candles, they're three for 15. Do you want three or six? I mean, who does that? And from a Target? Well, she's throwing Targets for me. And candles. It's pretty bonkers, but my parents have been divorced like seven times between the two of them. One time, I went home for Christmas, and my dad had a totally different wife than he had at Thanksgiving. Really? Yeah, but whatever. And I love my mom's new husband, Carlos. No, wait, it's Steve. Steve's also great. Not as great as Carlos, because he had a discount at Best Buy, but also great. I wish my parents would get divorced. Anything to avoid another Christmas dinner filled with simmering resentments and thinly veiled insults. Also, they make me go to church and pretend like I'm straight. It's like a Sundance movie from the 90s. Well, that's another thing. What happens to my family now? Where do I go for Christmas? Do I have to choose? Guys, what the f is a mel me? My parents are awful. How could they do this to me? It sucks. Maybe someone will buy you puppy. What the hell happened? I'm gonna go lie down. Oh, look, man, I'm really sorry, but I just feel like people are not feeling the mime thing these days. Look, look I would hate to sign you and then not be able to get you any work. Kids today really just want characters that are based on movies and video games, you know? Yeah, but you don't look like a Minecraft character. Oh, performers are so dramatic. You'd know best. I mean, seeing as you were one. I know. I know you said he didn't want to talk about it, but could you just tell me what happened? Not with the show, but between you and Jeremy? I mean, how could two people that spent so much time together just throw it all away? Liza, I can see that this is very important to you, but there's really not much to tell, okay? Jeremy and I created art together for 10 years, and then one day he just checked out. And I'm very sorry that that doesn't give you the closure that you wanted, but I wanted Magic Meadows to be the greatest children's puppet show entertainment that had ever been. Jeremy wanted to drink daiquiris, and sleep with women and ride on his Segway. All at the same time? Oh, he tried, yeah. But the point is that a partnership can't work that way. Both people have to hold up their end. Well, so much time has passed. Maybe Jeremy's changed. You could fix it. Look, I would love to talk to the guy, but good luck getting him to do anything that he doesn't feel like doing, because he's just kind of an asshole. Which one? Well, I need you to pick because I refuse to believe that both of these bring you bliss. <laughs> Just minimizing some of Bart Paul's things since I basically have nothing left. Mm. Nice pants. Thank you. They are half of my senior prom tuxedo. I've gotten rid of all my pants, except for these. Aren't they a little small for you and Gary the Cucumber? They fit perfectly like a glove. Oh, and P.S., nice new dress. I didn't know we were maximizing. Forgot to cut the tags. Oops. <laughs> Why do you smell so minty? Oh, I was minimizing the toiletries. Who needs deodorant when you have toothpaste? Interesting choice. Says the man who's hoarding toilet paper and paper grocery bags. <gasps> oh, hey, where are all the coffee mugs? Have you seen them? Oh, you mean my mugs? Mm. The ones I bought? I realized I only needed one. I mean, I can only have one cup at a time. I'm just one person. So smart. I thought the same thing when I got rid of all the spoons, except for the one I used to feed Bark Paul. So great. Bliss. There's nothing to talk about. I told Scott I wouldn't be in the same room with him unless he was in a coffin. And even then, I'd probably skip it if there was a Dodgers game on. So, you know, can't go back on that. But you're bare. Come on. Uh, whatever happened between you guys, you guys can work it out. 
Scott said he'd love to talk to you. I'd love to talk to that guy. That's exactly what Scott said. You mean talk at me? That's what he does. That guy's a megalomaniac. And if everything isn't exactly his way, he flips out. Did you know that J.J. Abrams wants to do a reboot of Magic Meadows and Scott won't sign the contracts? Everyone gets to cash in on the reboot trend, but no, not Scott and his precious puppet show. He's too good for that. J.J. Abrams? Oh, the hummingbirds. <gasps> Maybe he will explain what happened after the fire. Why did you say hummingbirds? What did Scott say to you? What? Nothing, forget it. <laughs> Scott's crazy, and I'm done with crazy. I installed a home theater for Little Wayne. I think it's pronounced Lil. You know what? You're crazy, too. And if you're not here to buy one of these 4K LG TVs that are an absolute steal with the rebate program, then get the hell out of my store. That's what I thought. Please leave. Unless you want to talk about an easy, low-interest payment plan. No, forget it. Get out! So what do I say again? I want a home theater. Liza, I don't know anything about home theaters. Why can't you just do this? Because if Jeremy knew it was me, then he wouldn't come. Oh, oh, oh. I can't. OK, 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 OK. Sorry, are you going to keep wearing those pants? Because I know we're close, but not, not that close. These pants fit me perfectly. Sorry. Listen, all you have to do is just let him measure stuff and ask him a lot of questions until Scott gets here, OK? I feel like maybe this isn't the best plan. It's just, if they were meant to do this show, wouldn't they still be doing the show? They're meant to do the show, they just don't know it, OK? Look, once they see each other, they'll forget they were ever angry, and I'll fix this whole thing and make millions of kids happy. If millions of people watch Magic Meadows, you'd think I would have heard of it. You were busy falling in love with a cucumber. How would you have heard of it? Fair. But just maybe consider that messing with two adult people's lives isn't the right thing to do. Oh, my God. Speaking of adult people, look what's on Instagram today. Apparently, it's National Daughters Day. And that nut job, Melamie, tagged me in a post. Oh. Yeah, to my darling daughter, Liza. What? Does she have brain damage? What's wrong with her? I've never even met the woman. And daughter? <laughs> I am not her daughter. I have parents who I hate. See, this is what I was trying to get at. Maybe you're trying to fix Scott and Jeremy's relationship, but really, you're trying to fix something else. What? No, I just want to find out who survived the fire. OK. Oh, good, you're ready. Hey, Jeremy's going to be here soon. Everything OK there? Yep. Maybe you should have kept more than one pair of shoes. Oh, these? <laughs> these are comfortable, seasonless, and aesthetically pleasing. It's a bliss trifecta. I could run a marathon in them. <laughs> Meanwhile, your pants are so tight, I could pick your penis out of a lineup. <gasps> Ew. I don't know what the hell is going on here, but the two of you need to stop playing penis police and focus on buying a home theater. He's here. I'm gonna hide. Right this way. We are very excited to own our own home theater. <laughs> it's uh, a little tight for a theater. Tight? Like somebody's pants? I'm just gonna take a look at your wiring. Here, why don't you take a look at these brochures? Oh. Oh. Hey, Liza. Hey, come on in. All right, is this dog ready to talk terms or what? What? Oh, we're talking about Bark Paul Gosalar, the Instagram dog. Liza says he's interested in getting into children's party appearances. Sticky little hands grabbing his delicate seashell like ears? Not ever. Children make Bark Paul sad. I'm sorry, who are you? I'm Bark Paul's manager. You said you were his manager. <laughs> Liza. Your wiring looks sound enough. Well, if it isn't Puppeteer Magazine's Betrayer of the Year. I think I just threw up two chicken tacos in my mouth. Oh, well, I know I did. Did you set this up? I'm out of here. Unless you're actually looking for some Bose Home Speaker 500s, the widest sound of any home speaker. Sorry. That's what I thought. I'm leaving. No, I'm leaving. Oh, no, I'm leaving. No, I'm leaving. Last one in, first one out. Wait, wait, please. Can you both just stay just for a minute? It's really important to me. Look, I know you have a problem with Scott being a micromanager, and I know you have problems with Jeremy not pulling his own weight. Is, is that, that what, what he said? said? The point is, is that you both made something really great together. And since you're in the same room as one another again, shouldn't you at least try to work out your differences? I have carrots and honey. Well, that is my favorite snack. Mine, too. So, nobody has anything they'd like to say? I know who would like to talk. Where'd you get that? eBay. Good morning, rabbit. Good magical morning to you, bear. That doesn't sound anything like me. Give me that. Yeah, give me, give me. Hand that over. 
terrible. Not even close. Here. <clears throat> First of all, when a puppet speaks, his lower lip flaps down, not up, okay? Just like when human beings speak. Here he goes again. Flap down, flap down. It's a show for five-year-olds. You think they notice if I flap up or down? They just think I'm cute as a honeypod. Well, actually, five-year-olds are capable of grasping some pretty sophisticated concepts, Bear. Like an inappropriately large and realistic forest fire that would rattle them to their very cores and give them nightmares for years? Help me! I'm burning! Why is this fire so big? Oh, sure, sure, Bear. Let's just sing happy songs all the time, huh? And let's never, never deal with any real-world problems that might actually help children develop coping skills for later in life. No, never, never, never! What, do you want an episode where Bear tried heroin and did his taxes? Can you believe this cute fluffy bastard? This is why I left the meadow. Oh, really? I thought it was because you were sleeping with my wife! Yeah, Sheila and I are just going down to Smart and Final, huh? Well, how many trips to Smart and Final does anybody need? How many bulk bins of red vines was I supposed to ignore? Hummingbird resented you. You were never home, and you never let her sing live. Her head voice was nasally! Not when it was saying my name, it wasn't. Oh, that's it. You get you that? Yeah, bring it on. Stop it! Stop it! You Stop it. fighting! You're two grown men who can't speak to each other without fighting. We're puppets. You're too controlling. You're an arrogant jerk. Just grow up and apologize to each other. Why do you even care? Because I need to know how it ends. I need to know what happened and why didn't anybody tell me and I don't want Todd's office in my bedroom or two Christmases and now what's going to happen to me? <laughs> Look what you did. Liza is having a very difficult time right now. She's dying. She's not dying. Well, I just thought it would land better than her parents got a divorce. <sighs> Oliver, we've been so caught up in minimizing that we haven't been available to comfort Liza. Oh, hey, I just minimized my garage. I'm sorry, I'm really lost. Look, I don't know the specifics of your long-term battle, which seems to have many, many ugly layers, but that is her friend in there, and she's going through stuff, and she's hurting. So did her parents get divorced while Magic Meadows was on the air? Oh, no, last week, or last month. I don't know, the timing is super unclear. The point is, she's dying. She's not dying. But what she would really like is if you two could put your grievances aside, act like adults, and help her through this. I didn't know about that. You know, my parents got divorced when I was 37, and I'm still broken up about it. My first two divorces were extremely traumatic. Worse than when I got arrested for public nudity at that KFC in Fresno. You were the one who wired my bail money. Anybody would have done that. What do you think? You think we can put on one last show for a little girl who could really use some magic? I do believe we can. This was such a fun trip. We took this Texas train tour to New Orleans. My parents made me get in a carry-on so they didn't have to buy as many tickets. Then my dad left me under the seat and they all got off the train without me. <laughs> This was right after they came back for me. I don't know. I was so stupid to think that a puppet show could make me feel better about it all. Well, do you think you can come out to the living room anyway? Just for a minute? Oh, wow. Welcome to the season finale of Magic Meadows. <laughs> really? Down by the shores of Lake Love a lot, where the water's nice and cool and the sun's always hot. All your friends are waiting for you to laugh and play till the day is through. So come and meet us at the end of the rainbow. Round the bend at Magic Meadows. <laughs> When we last left Magic Meadow, there was a terrible fire. Hummingbird was trying to roast marshmallows like she had seen some cool campers do when she accidentally fell asleep. Hummingbird was always making messes. She was always in a hurry. She also apparently spent a lot of time at the Smartin' Final. <laughs> so that's why it's always important to have a plan. So you can be safe in case of an emergency. 
I'm gonna store extra honey in case I run out. I'm not sure that's exactly an emergency, Bear. To my stomach, it is. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> I don't know, Bear. How does a cucumber become a pickle? It goes through a jarring experience. I love cucumbers. <laughs> Sorry, I got excited. Because don't you know you can do anything you put your... Oh. Sorry, I just realized my mouth was moving weird. It should be going like this. Listen, that's okay, Bear. Maybe it's more important what you're saying, not so much how you're saying it. I shouldn't be such a bossy bunny all the time. Thank you, Rabbit. And I'm sorry I went down to Clover Corners with Hummingbird behind your back. You know, I probably wasn't paying enough attention to Hummingbird at home. Plus, I heard she also went down to Clover's Corners with Joe, the boom operator, and Chris, the production assistant. So what can you do? She was a giant whore, Ming Bird. <laughs> <laughs> farewell, farewell. Let's, Let's say, say goodbye. goodbye. To the flowers. To the trees. And, and the, the sun, sun in the, the sky. But give a big smile, friends, and don't be blue. Cause Magic Meadows waits for you. Magic Meadows waits for you. So long! <laughs> Bravo! Bravo! That was amazing! You guys are amazing! Oh my god, you guys are truly magic together. You have to do more shows. You're getting back together, right? No. I mean, don't you see? It's over. I get it. Scott and Jeremy made something wonderful together, but that doesn't mean the relationship has to go on forever. That was the end. You have such great chemistry. Maybe have you tried? People change, Harlow. Relationships change, but they don't have to change you or define you. Even if your bedroom turns into Todd's office, you're still you. And maybe I can help Melamy learn how to spell her own name correctly. Who knows? But it's time to forgive and move on like Bear and Rabbit have. I'm gonna call my parents and wish their effed up asses happiness. You're gonna be okay. I'm already okay. You know why? Because I've made a whole new family for myself right here. <laughs> I'm sure they may wear weird pants and gigantic shoes, but they still love me enough to help put on the very last episode of my favorite show of all time. I really love you guys. We love you more. <laughs> It's nice to know that what we did meant so much to people. Minus that handful of people that got burned in the fire, but yeah. Hey, listen, I'm gonna sign that uh, JJ deal. Let them do the reboot. Really? Yeah. I don't want to manage clowns and princesses forever. <laughs> bad. I'm moving to Cabo. <laughs> oh, high five! Oh, high five. <laughs> oh, okay. Let them do the hugging. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel like I'm dying of these pants. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. I'm gonna have to amputate at least three of my toes. We gonna get new furniture? Are you crazy? I didn't get rid of anything. It's all under a tarp in the garage. Oh, seriously. Mm. I sold everything on eBay. Got fifteen thousand dollars. Huh? Hey, Jeremy, does fifteen thousand dollars buy us a new home theater? This is it. This is it. <laughs> a very magic morning to you, Rabbit. Will Smith? And a magic morning right back, Bear. Emma Stone? Oh. Wow. Three cheers for gender-blind casting. Can you say Emmy Award? <laughs> Carrots and honey? Damn, you look beautiful today, Rabbit. Wait, why is Bear getting behind Rabbit like that? Mm, you smell just like honey. Oh. Mm. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, oh, honey. Right. Oh, major departure. This is not appropriate metal behavior. Mm. Not at all. Uh, I want to see. No. no. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought it was because you were sleeping with my wife! Yeah! I know all about it! <laughs> I don't know what the hell is going on here, but both of you need to stop playing with your penises. What's the line? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> You think we can put on one last show for a little girl who could really use some magic? No. <laughs>
on the next Lies on Demand. This isn't our party. Full disclosure, I'm here for a task a job. I see a beautiful woman. I mean, a beautiful man. Desperate AF. Don't you have a home you should be wrecking? Would you mind if I just check the tag real yes, quick? Yes, I mind. I need you to go upstairs and read my son Trevor at bedtime story. Whoa! Whoa! Sorry, are, are you one of those prostitutes that won't kiss on the mouth? Ew, gross. Why would you even think that? Also, the right term is sex worker or possibly sex professional, but we can get into the politics of that another time. <laughs>